not your time. Let him take you when he's ready to take you. But glory to God when he takes me away from all the heartache, from all my pain and all my worries, all my sufferings, to some place where I ain't got nothing to do but praise him and be happy. Hallelujah. To have joy on my mind all the time. Jesus. One day. Hallelujah. Glory. All right. I promise you I won't be very long at all tonight. But if you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of James chapter 1. We're going to read verses 22 through 25. And that first verse, I'm going to mess with you a little bit and ask you to kind of read it with me. I may ask you to sort of repeat some things, but just be patient with me. We'll get to a point to it because that has a lot to do with what we're talking about tonight. This is a real familiar scripture. It's uh, one I'm sure that everybody knows, even most of our children may know this verse. Still, it is the meat of tonight's message. But come on, everybody with me, if you could, just read verse 22 with me. And remember, I'm going to mess with you a little bit, all right? Verse 22 says, but be ye doers of the word. Let's say that again. But be ye doers of the word. One more time. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Somebody say it again. And not hearers only. Are you listening? Okay, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Sometimes we just, we listen and we think that's enough, but we're fooling ourselves. And you've got to take the word, as the Bible says, hide it in your heart. You've got to apply it to your life. You have to use it. But first, you've got to be somebody who listens. All right, let's go ahead and read on 23 through 25. It says, for if any be a hearer of the word. Again, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. How many of you realize tonight that you are not the same person? And I'm not just talking about when you got to confess them as your Lord and Savior, when you got baptized in Jesus' name, when you received the Holy Ghost, but can you honestly remember that every time that you came to worship, Every time that you got down on your knees and prayed, every time that you fasted, every time that you fellowshiped in the house of the Lord, or, or every time you, 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 you strengthen and you have your worship time with God, you have to understand you were not the same anymore. But you should have gone on a little bit closer to God, so to speak. And whatever trouble or concern that you had, you shouldn't be worried about it anymore. And not only that, if you were blessed at the time that you were fasting, praying, or whatever, now she get to the point to where that's in the past and there should be something greater that's about to take place in my life at this moment because I've been with God. How many of you have always heard me say that when you get in the presence of the Lord, you cannot leave the same. You have to change. Let's keep reading. Last verse, but verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Oh, there's freedom. But there's also a law about liberty that you have to obey. If you want liberty, there's going to be some rules and stuff you got to follow. If you want a blessing, if you want deliverance, if you want God's attention, there's an order. There's a rule and stuff you, you've got to follow. And you can't do it just any kind of way, Brother Smith, but you got to do it his way. 
But whoso looketh into a perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not for a forgetful hearer. There's something about that thing hearing. You know, sometimes we hear it and we celebrate it and, and we go at the main hour that we are hearing the thing. But then it's like the minute we walk out and we have a little problem or it's time to eat, we forget the thing that we just heard. Forgetting that we were supposed to be changed. Forgetting that we were supposed to be different. Forgetting that, hey, I heard this word. Now I'm supposed to apply it to my life if I want to actually see the change or the new thing in me that's taking place. Y'all still with me? Okay. So he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Father, in Jesus' name, help us, Lord, to understand your word tonight as we give you glory, as we give you praise. Help us, Lord God, to be sensitive to your spirit, Father God, and use me, an unworthy vessel, Father God, to give what you've given me, Lord, to share with your people in hopes, Father God, and expectations, Lord God, absolutely, that this would change our life, that we would get closer to you, Lord God, that we would be empowered by that word, Lord. name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You know, you can be seated. And this is actually, you know, it's actually a three-part series, but I'm going to try to rush through it. If I don't, maybe I'll teach the rest later on, get called to do so. But in order to get instruction, you have to be somebody to listen and to hear instruction first. How many men do we have in here that, you know, you hate reading instruction when it comes to fixing things? Or for all you gamers that we have in here, you don't really like to read always the instructions or the tutorial of the game. You just seen enough, feel like you know, so go ahead and do it. And then later on, you found out there was something else. Like, if you put something together and you got parts missing, you know, it's because you didn't read the instructions. Or even if you put it together right, and you find out later on down the line, I've done this before. I've put things together electronically, and I didn't make a mistake, put it together, and it looked right. But because I didn't read the instructions, I found out that there were these little things about it that could have made it so much more useful to me. So, and so to speak, there were little uh, 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 gadgets, little things that could have made my life easier if I'd have just known how to use what I had. If I'd have read the instructions and gone through it carefully. Sometimes God will give us instructions and we don't necessarily listen and we feel like we already know. Uh, we, we hear, uh, when we hear people speak and when we hear them preach and teach, you know, a lot of it's the same subject. A lot of it's about faith. A lot of it's about obedience. A lot of it's about, you know, living right. A lot of it's about not going into sin. A lot of it's about marital things and family things. You know, we, we've heard all those subjects, but because the Word is a living Word of God, there is always something new that you pick up. And so, you know, if you're not one to listen to God's instructions, and sometimes you have to go through it more than once, then there are blessings and things that you can miss out on the way. There's strengths, there's anointing, there's wisdom that you can get that would have made your life so much easier to deal with conflict and irritations and afflictions and battle the enemy a little bit better if you'd have just listened to the instruction. Because some of us believe we already know what we are, but we have to remember that, you know, through obedience to God, it can be as, it can cause us to be more. I don't know about you, but we being as you know uh, symbolizes being trees that bear fruit and produce. Don't forget that the tree is also supposed to grow, and the more you grow, the more fruit you can produce, the more seeds that you can spread. The more you grow, the more wisdom you get, the more strong you get. You know, the bigger I've seen a tree grow, the harder it is to deal with or, or cut down or, or, or for anything to bother. It, it's tough. But the first thing you got to do is hear God when he's speaking. And he speaks in many ways, through prayer, through prophet, through the words, through teaching, even through music. Sometimes we just like to listen to music just because the beat or the melody 
It's fun and it sounds good, but if you take time and listen to the words of the song, you can understand if it's ministering to you. Is the song saying something that applies to your life, that you can relate to, that will encourage you, that will change you? But that doesn't work if you don't listen. And even those songs that we sing give instruction. They give hope. The one we sang earlier, you know, uh, uh, one day, there's going to come a time when it's over. Just thinking about that one day that's coming, thinking about when the rapture's coming, thinking about when it's going to be my time for Jesus, enables me to keep going and strengthens me to get through day to day. Keeps me from falling in love with things or, or trying to hold on to things that don't last forever, but encourages me to catch on and grasp on to things that are real and eternal. So hearing God, and you, you hear him in the secret place, is one of the greatest keys in living the, in the Christian life, just listening to him. However, it's got to be linked with the result of a, so to speak, a, a radical type of obedience. We hear, and then we do. James said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers of the word, because you're only deceiving yourselves. But by a radical obedience, I mean an immediate obedience that is without question that says, you know, when you know it's God talking to you, whatever the commandments is, you know, uh, you go ahead and you do his commandments to the fullest measure. But not only that, but a radical obedience doesn't seek to just comply with minimal standards of his commandments. But it pursues to be more extravagant, so to speak. Are y'all still with me? A lavish fulfillment. If, you know, Jesus told a man, a rich young man, a rich ruler the Bible talks about, in the book of Luke 8, uh, uh, chapter 18, verses 20 to 23, I believe. And the guy asked him, he asked Jesus, he said, you know, what do I have to do to make it into the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus asked him, he said, well, don't you know all the commandments? Just the commandments. Let's get to the obedience part. He said, you know the commandments. He said, you know, don't commit adultery. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Honor thy mother and thy father, etc." And the man said, he, you know, I've heard all this mess since I was little. Jesus, I was in church. I went to Sunday school. I used to get up and read the scripture before the class for everybody. I got all my stars and stuff. I, I did my Sunday school homework. I know it. And then Jesus told him, of course, well, you're just lacking one thing. What is it that you can be lacking when you've, when you've followed all the commandments that were written in the Old Testament? They're still alive. They still apply. We still can't break them. When you break them, that's sin. And the wages of sin is death. But there's a little more to it. So Jesus said, you're lacking one thing, sir. And he just was like, well, what is it I'm lacking? And he says, well, I want you to sell everything that you have. Everything. Maybe save the clothes on your back and the shoes on your feet. But I want you to sell everything you've got. And remember now, guys, he, he's rich. So he's got some things. He's got land. He's got cattle. He, 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 he's got, you know, gold. He, he's got uh, uh, resources. He's got uh, scents and spices, all those things. But he said, I want you to sell everything. Everything that you have. And the guy will say, okay, well, that's a bit harsh. Maybe I can do that. But Jesus is like, no, we're not quite done yet. But once you sell everything that you have, I want you to go ahead and take time out to distribute it to the poor. That means I want you to divide it up. I want you to decide who gets what, who needs this, who needs that. But the point is, I want you to give it all away. So I even want you to work hard just to give it away. So he said, because he said, distribute it unto the poor. And then if you go ahead and do that, sir, when you do that, I'll make sure you've got reward and treasure in heaven. And after you've done that, I want you to come follow me. And the guy heard this. And, <laughs> you must be out of your mind, man. You know how long it Get that stuff, how father's breaking his back. You know, some things we don't want to be giving up when we've when we, uh, been working hard for it. And we especially don't like to give something up 
for something we can't even see. We don't want to make sacrifices for something that we're unsure of or uncertain that it's going to come. But faith, of course, we walk by faith, but not by sight. And so, but this guy, he, he heard all the commandments, and he obeyed them since birth. So, you know, this was his norm as far as obedience goes. So I guess he had a pretty good sense of obedience. However, but when it came time for him to take a new level, to get more extreme in his obedience to God. Remember what I said. I said when you get in the presence of God, something has got with you has got to change. And he sure enough had a love and a concern for the things that he possessed. Now he is in the presence of the living embodiment in the flesh of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's asked him a question, you know, that we all love to ask him if we can see him. Is there anything I'm lacking to get an audio and visual answer for him to literally give instruction with you face to face? Somebody you can touch now. And he says, I want you to go ahead and just give everything you've got. Even though you kept all those commandments, that's good. But now I want you to give everything. Everything. We got to be willing to sacrifice everything to God. When we made him our Lord and our Savior, that word Lord, it means master. Not only master over, you know, just because he's called the master. He's master over us. He's master over our families, our spouses, all our possessions. And just to cheer you up a little bit, he's also master over your problems, over your sickness, over your worries, over the things that you lack. But this guy got into the presence of Christ, and it was a time, a chance, an opportunity for him to get more extreme in his obedience and obeying God. Not only just to keep, you know, the past and, 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 and just the past Ten Commandments, and, and they're still in effect, like I said. But the point is, he told the man, sell everything, give all the profits. And the thing was, the man wasn't willing to do everything that he commanded. This wasn't just an order. It wasn't something he was asking him to do. It was something he is commanding to do. What I'm trying to get you to understand is if you want to be perfect, if you really want to understand why the laws and why the commandments of the Lord are so important, if you want to be released from poverty and released from worry and released from stress, you're going to have to go ahead and follow his instructions, even though it seems a little extreme. But you have to be one of the ones that says, okay, Lord, I don't care what you say, but whatever you say, I'm going to do it. I don't care where it is or where you tell me to go, but if you tell me to go, I'm going. Whether I understand it, whether it makes sense to me, whether people say it's wrong, it's just the fact that if you said go, I'm going. If you said give it up, I'm going to give it up. If you said to do it, I'll do it. And then when you do that, he will say, he'll say you're heaven ready. You're made perfect. Some of this is flying right over y'all. But it was his opportunity, but yet he wanted to hold on to stuff. He, what I'm saying is he wasn't willing to be obedient enough. And this is what I'm saying by taking obedience to the next level. It is doing what is considered to be the extreme. What in the norm we call it to be too much. How many of you can really tell Jesus you're asking too much when he gave his life? You're asking too much. When he took embarrassment for you, you're asking too much. When he paid the wages of your sin, you're asking too much. When by his stripes we were healed, by his blood we were made clean. We weren't worthy, but he called us righteous. Come on, somebody. We didn't deserve his spirit, but he gave it to us. How can you say to him, it's too much? It was an opportunity not only for him to deliver his faith in Christ, but it was also to show his greatest love for him and his obedience, his gratefulness. So the question is, when you hear the voice of God, the Lord tell you to do something, whatever it is, will you do it? Abraham didn't question God when he said, I want you to take your son and sacrifice for me. I saw no question about it in the Bible. 
He didn't even leave room for people to argue with him. You know why? Because he didn't tell anybody what he was doing. The only thing he says, we're going up somewhere to make a sacrifice. Junior, come on. Didn't say what it was or who it was. But that was a new level. It's no wonder God called him his friend. Because he went obedient for him to the extreme. He heard what he had to say, and he didn't question it. He just did it. The New Testament word for obedience is called hapako. And it's a compound word. You separate, and, uh, and one part is called hupo, and it means under. The other part is called akuo, and it means to hear. So to say obey is to hear under. You know, sometimes before we can do anything, we got to learn to get under Jesus' feet and just sit down and listen to what he has to say. Obedience involves listening. It involves hearing attentively with a heart that is in absolute compliance and submission with his commandments, obeying his word. Whether you read about it or whether you know for sure you heard the voice of God. Implicit obedience starts from every one of us, not in doing good works, but sitting fast and sitting under his feet and hearing his word. Devotion in a secret place is the saints of God's first great act of obedience. You know, sometimes we come to church and we go through the motion, we go through the word, and sometimes we just want to hear certain things, like how we want to play the games or put certain things together. We think we know the rest. Or we don't want to hear the rest. Sometimes we only want to hear what may stick out to us, you know, right at that time. But I guarantee you every one of his words is precious. And regardless of what did not apply to you at that certain time, you will use it or it will apply to you sometime sooner or later in life. Jesus wastes nothing. When he fed the 5,000, he had the 12 baskets of food left over. He said collect them and he doesn't waste anything. But if you want to miss out on the blessing, if when you come again to another circumstance that you don't know what to do to handle, you have to remember and apply his instruction to your life. But first of all, you've got to listen and hear everything. Obedience. People that are obedient. They, they say obedience is even better than sacrifice. By doing what he commands, our obedience is what shows that we automatically, we believe everything that he says. It's not many people you can find or many children you can have or you could be a supervisor and you find people that, you know, you ask them to do something or tell them to do something. Sometimes they always got a question. Sometimes like uh, the rich young ruler, he may ask you to do something that's not in your job description. You know, I do the ushering. But I can't pray. I run the sound booth. But I'm not going to get out there and sing for the Lord and dance for him or, 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 you know, even if God prompts me to go do it because that's just not my job. That's not my thing. Many times it's preached to come out of your comfort zone. When God gives you a command that says, I want you to step out and sing a new song to me. I want you to step out into a fresher anointing. I want you to step out and do something different than what you've been doing for the past 10 years from the norm. And watch me do a change or a thing you've never seen. If you're just willing to step out and you can obey my commands without question. In most restaurants, when people make messes and stuff or, or, or one of the other open workers leave a mess, they, they don't sit there. You know, a good employee is just going to go right behind them and clean up. Because they don't have time to go trying to find the person that did it or fussing at the boss about so-and-so left this and didn't clean it up. But it's like they want to be just more than an employee. They want to be an asset to the company that shows their value. So when the supervisor or the, the uh, boss or whoever comes out and sees them work, and he's like, you know, they're always got their hands. That's one that I never hear complain. That's one who's not always running his mouth, but he's listening and just doing what he's supposed to do. He's helping this place to run. How many of you understand that we got to be people that are helping the body of Christ to run to make it better? Sometimes you're going to have to help or, or get out of your comfort zone or do something different. God will prompt you to do something that you don't normally do or operate in a gift that you don't normally operate in. But you're going to have to do it by faith and without question and just be obedient and then trust and know that God is going to make something spectacular that nobody ever seen happen. 
And it's going to change you and move to another level. Is anybody wanting to go to another level with him? We talk about it. But what are we willing to do to get there? And we're in the family of Christ. Look, Mark 33 verse, uh, thir- uh, Mark chapter 3, verses 33 through 35, um, it reads, and it says, And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brother? We all claim to be in the family, the body of Christ. And he looked around and about them, which set about him. And he said, behold, my mother and brother. Now, he looked around at everybody, everybody that was sitting around him. And he said, behold, my mother and brother. He said, for whosoever shall do the will of God, his will, what he wants, what he commands, the same is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So he answered saying, who is my mother or brother or sister? Looked around in a circle. Here they are. Those are the ones that are doing my will. Those are the ones that are following my command. The will of God in that moment was for the people to sit at Jesus' feet and hear the word. Until you attend the responsibility first, you will constantly be frustrated and, an innov- and, and, and inevitably you know, unable to uncover a spiritual type of you know, elevation or motivation and energy that can only be gained from a furnace of the fiery love and the relationship that you have at Jesus' feet by hearing it. True fulfillment of Christ is also serving him. Jesus is discovered, you know, when he gets to those things first. You know, first things first. You got to be a hearer of the word, which means you got to sit down and listen. You want faith? Faith comes by what? Listen. Listen, and in all you get and get an understanding. If you listen, you'll get an understanding. If you listen, you'll get wisdom. If you listen, you'll get proper instruction. If you listen, you'll know what to do to get a blessing. You'll know what to do to break chains. You'll know what to do to cast a demon out. You'll know when it's time to fast and when it's time to pray. But you got to listen before you can do. If you go out there and try to do something and you don't know what you're doing because you haven't listened... Now, I'm almost done. There's some saints that are, you know, called common law saints. Anybody ever heard of a common law saint? I know you heard of a common law saint. Mr. Dixon, no? Yes, I thought you did. (laughs) Okay. But a common law saint is somebody who wants all the benefits of living with Christ without making a commitment. They're the people that don't count the cost. They're the people that, you know, all I heard is I can make it to heaven. All I heard is that when I asked for, I receive. I didn't hear I had to do anything else but ask. Just go down in the water and let somebody pray for me and start talking in a Spanglish kind of type of way. But that's it. But common law Christians don't like to go to give up certain things. They don't like to sacrifice. They don't like to obey. And even when they do, they'll come a point when they say, okay, that's too much. You're asking too much, Jesus. But they want all the happiness. They want all the joy. But even as the full of joy of living together, in, like it can be found in marriages, it can be found in family, but to actually show joy in following uh, Jesus is only found by abandoning yourself. Self-sacrifice, dying daily. This is something that he commands, that we repent daily, that we die daily, that we don't worry, that we depend on him, that we seek ye first, putting him first. First things first, seek ye first, seek ye first. Not seek ye second, not seek ye when I get around to it, not seek ye tomorrow, not let so-and-so seek him, but seek you. You seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the rest of these things will be added unto me. But what has to be done in order to do that is you've got to abandon yourself and obey his word. This is the kind of sacrificial life. It is an extreme life. But we get the victory when we follow his instructions. We don't miss out on blessings when we follow his instructions. So by following, so, so by abandoning oneself and, and, you know, by living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, oh, y'all got to hear me. 
You know, some people put their best energies and their, 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 their hopes and plans in their own creative kind of thinking. However, God has a way of neglecting the plans of men. In Psalms 33, uh, verses 10 and 11, you know, uh, uh, God talks about the council of nations or the council of the heathen, so to speak. And he says they wind up being nothing. And then he says his will is going to be altered, meaning that he says that the plans of people, they have no effect. Your plan and my plan is not going to have an effect on anything we do. Any plan that we want to surely work and to surely succeed without fail and perfection, you just have to follow God's plan. He's the only one that is perfect. So he makes plans for people of no effect. His counsel, his rule, it stands forever. And so we got to get to a point to instead of focusing on being creative or having such a creative mind, we got to learn to focus on listening to him so that we can be obedient to his command. If you're going to give your best, give your best in being obedient to him and waiting on God in his presence, listening, hearing for his voice. Y'all still with me? I'm sorry, this ain't going to be a, <laughs> I'm just trying to teach a little bit. All right. But listening for his voice and then moving out in action only when he is spoken. In other words, he says, on my command, fire. He says, when I give the signal, fire. He didn't say fire when you see the white of his eyes. He just said fire when I say fire. You don't fire late. You don't fire too early, but you wait for his command. This is a hard thing. Sometimes we get so excited and we see that blessings and we see the glory and victory and all these things are on the way and we're jumping up and down. Or sometimes we get so worried and, Lord, you're about to be too late. They're coming to get us. But, you know, we have to wait until he gives the word. If you don't wait until he gives the word and you do it on your own, that means you did not listen. And then you wonder why is it that you fail? King Saul didn't listen to Samuel and decided to do what he wanted to do and that's why he lost all his kings that's why he lost being king that's why God found another man that was after his own heart missed out on the blessing and so we've got to be listening for his voice and then move on the action only when he has spoken there's no sense in us coming up with our own ideas or our own wisdoms, you know, that won't stand. When, when you, you read about that in, in the book of Psalms, in uh, Psalm 33, how he says that the, your counsel, man's counsel, he, he called them the heathens. It's not going to stand. The key for anything to work, and I mean anything to work, is to listen and to and obey his word. You know, none of us can stop the sun from rising, and we can't stop night from falling. We can't stop the light from coming because God said, let there be light. And then when he was ready for the sun to go down, he said, let there be darkness. We can't stop the wind from blowing. Only God can do that. We can hide from it. We can try to block it. And, oh, he might let you think you're doing something. But I've seen winds that'll tear up whole countries and they'll tear up whole buildings and structures that people said couldn't. They said the Titanic couldn't be sunk. But when it got out there in the water and it met up to something that God had made and created. Anything that he says, it will not fail. He, he holds his own word higher than himself. His word will go out and accomplish. It's on a mission and it cannot be stopped. If he says you're going to make it, you'll make it. If he says you're going to be victorious, you'll have victorious. If he says you're going to be blessed, you'll be blessed. If he says you're going to overcome, you're going to overcome. Maybe I need to talk it better so you can understand. If he says you're the head and not the tail, you are the head and not the tail. If he says you can do all things through Christ, you can do all things through Christ. All he's got to do is say it and speak it, and it happens. It is law, and everything has to obey it. But if you want to know that and have some comfort in your life, you've got to hear it first. Oh, what a joy it is to hear his word and then do it. The benefits of it are so profound. 
obedience, it unlocks the eternal and abundant life. This is the New King James Version. Jesus said in uh, John 12, verse 50, and I'll just read that part. He says, and I know that his commandment, his command is everlasting life. That's his command. So if we follow his instructions, if we be obey his command, we have what? We have everlasting life. Those simple words, they contain far more than the impact, than a cursory reading, you know, that it would take to reveal. It would take a statement place of, of, of meditation and, and then let it awaken the life-giving power of the extravagant life. But you got to adhere to his command. The life that resides in him, it flows into you whenever you obey. The blessings that he has for you, you don't miss out, but they flow into you. They come your way. You find them whenever you obey his word. Obedience is something that incurs the gaze of God. God looks at people with spectral interests and, and affections upon those. Anybody who's devoted to being obedient to him. Isaiah 66, uh, uh, verse 2. But on this time will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles of my word. This is fantastic. Just imagine it. You're in a secret place with his word before you. And you're trembling at the prospect of his speaking to you. He sees that you have a willing spirit. And he conceives of your ways to honor his devotion. To tremble in the word means to first, you know, anybody ever been prayed for in here by uh, Brother Steve Grimsley before? It's a powerful moment for those of you that had. I mean, you get down, I can't stand up straight when he's praying on me. And I mean, he ain't pushing, and I know he ain't. And my knees are trembling, and I'm nervous, and I'm scared to death. But I know that I'm in the presence, I mean, a thick presence of the awesome power of God. How can you get in the presence of someone so powerful and awesome that you can't help but the bow? I, when that happens to me, I got a new meaning of, the, of what it meant by every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You can't help it. But then once I come out of his presence, he's prophesied that this great thing, that great thing, this wonderful thing. And sometimes he'll leave, but you have to do so-and-so. And when I got obedient and I'd done it, I'd see that very thing that God said would happen. It, it happened because God has some favoritism for some people that are willing to be obedient to his word. People that have crazy faith to do whatever he says and just know he's going to make anything happen because you obeyed. And I didn't just listen to the prophet when he said this and this is what happened. I had to listen to instruction to get it. God is a God of order. So there's going to be instruction. God is a God of order. So if you want to have prosperity, you got to follow his instruction. And he's a God of order. So if you want to make friends, you have to show yourself how. That's instruction. And so obedience. And I'm closing because we're running out of time. I won't be able to finish. But obedience produces a greater intimacy. And one of the most powerful, you know, statements that Jesus made. So on earth is right here. You know, he says, he who has my commandments keeps them. It is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself in him. John 14, 21. So when you obey his word, when you're obedient to him, but you have to listen in order to obey. When you do that, then listen. He, he, Jesus said this. He says, if you keep his commandments, you're showing him that you love him. And not only that, but you're loved by him. Now, I know we're all loved, but I mean, now he's pointing out some people here directly. They'll be loved by the Father and then manifested. Do you know what that means? Manifested. Brought to a point, not necessarily, I mean, I'll just go ahead and say it, to where people can see it. How many of you have ever been around and, and folks ask you, are you a Christian? There's something different about you. When I saw you, there was something, you know, 
different about you. You, you stand out. And you're not dressed in anything that's attractive. You're, you're not uh, uh, talking to folk, but they know for some reason that you are a saint of God and that for some reason they're drawn to you because they can sense the power in you. And so they ask you, are you a Christian? Why? Because you are somebody who has obeyed God and he has loving you and he has manifested himself in you for others to recognize without you even lifting a finger. You're just standing there minding your own business. Maybe not even holding the Bible. Maybe on the bus. Maybe in a restaurant. But if you want to be known, you got to be somebody that obeyed. Love, it brings us into incredible intimacy with the Father. And furthermore, obedience unlocks the affections of Jesus Christ, his self-disclosure to the human heart. There's nothing more than any of us should long for than to have Jesus manifesting himself through us. Lord, if we can do that, if we want to change, then when we get into him, when we enter into his courts with thanksgiving, I'm sorry, through his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, there comes a time when, okay, Father, you know, I, I've come in, but now I got to hear what you're telling me. I think some of this is flying over our heads here. You're going to have to listen and consider the Bible's a living word. I, I, I told my youth this when we used to be able to have youth in class. But when you read the Bible, you have to have an inquisitive. I'm challenging you. You read the Bible, I want you to have an inquisitive mind about it. I don't want you to think of it as just a book, but think of it as a living word. I want you to imagine yourself with those people seeing what they see. How would you act? And imagine how the people around you would be. Imagine how the people that uh, the Bible speaks of, like uh, everybody likes to use uh, Mary, for example. And Joseph, he, he wasn't a poor guy. He was a famous guy. He was from the bloodline of David. And, you know, I know we go to SeaWorld and we see all the little animals talking and things and and they're talking and bragging about what they've done for uh, Jesus and how it was uh, credited to them that he was born safely or made it to the manger. But when you really think about it, the animals didn't do nothing but probably just look at him. Maybe done some unseemly things, made some smells, flies, parasites. He was born in a barn full of animals. Now imagine if you were expecting a child and your husband, who was somebody, not just anybody, but he's got loose. And it's taking you not to a good place to have your child or the best hospital that he can afford. But he's taking you to a barn. She must have been telling him off, riding on a mule and carrying on. And then guys, on the other hand, you have to think about it, too. He was like, well, I don't even know for sure if the child is mine. <laughs> I didn't even touch you yet. How you think my family going to feel? They're not going to believe this. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things going through there. I mean, people are people. Even back then, they were real people with real issues, with real problems, real emotions. They went through things just as we did. This word speaks to us, and it gives us instruction. But it demonstrates how the saints of God behaved in it, how Jesus acted in it, or how he instructed to deal with it. And still to this day, we go through many of the same things. The only thing that's changed is technology. But even though technology seems to advance, we still have the same amount of trouble, the same problems. And as a matter of fact, I can go out and dare say it gets worse. Because we thought with all the technology and pharmaceutical stuff, we could stop all the diseases. Some people I heard, I read, they got a pill that makes you live forever. I mean, it's just, all, yes, they do. But God said that it is appointed. <laughs> There's an appointment once for every man, everybody, you're going to die sooner or later. So you better get right with him. Don't think you're going to be able to outlast this. These people think they can stop global warming and all these other things. Don't think. It's because he said it. So like the old saying going, if you can't beat him, you might as well join him. <laughs> You'll be better off. 
Amen. All right, let's go ahead and praise the Lord one more time. Just give him a hand clap of praise. I, I'm done, but <laughs> try your best, please, to do what God says. Be sensitive to him. Question him and ask him what it is that you that he may want you to do. Always be on a mission. All right. Praise the Lord. All done.